Um, hello, everybody, and welcome along to our Cheltenham 2024 Festival Preview. Now, Festival Previews have been whinged about, moaned about, and basically slated to high hell on social media during the last couple of weeks. And quite frankly, if you don't want to watch our one, we couldn't care less. But once again, though, I'm very pleased to be joined by my two right-hand men to steer us through this weekly preview with Jack and Tom from JTW Equine Images, fresh from Old Trafford today, and a 2-0 victory for their beloved Manchester United. Lads, thank you for coming on again tonight. And you're in good spirits from this afternoon's result. Yep, absolutely in good spirits and also slightly sore throat from screaming and shouting at Rashford and Bruno penalties. But yeah, it was a it was a good performance. Probably should have been three or four nil, but a win's a win. Can't say the same about your beloved Fulham though, can we? Yeah, uh, well, it's one of those things with us. It's just like two steps forward, one step back. Annoying result, just didn't take our chances, but we're going to Spurs next week, hopefully looking to put that behind us. Right, guys, so what we're going to do for you this for this preview anyway this year, we're going to do four different videos each day wrapped up in around about 40 minutes or so, hopefully, if we um, all don't talk too much, but we can't guarantee that because it's Cheltenham. But we're going to go straight into the Supreme Office hurdle. Ballyburn at the moment is still in here, but as we found out earlier this week, he's off to the Barring Bingham later on during the week, and I think he's a, a pretty sure bet to win that anyway. Mystical Power currently tops the market, 130. The son of the great Annie Power. He's three from three. He was impressive last time. But you're both against him. And, Tom, you can kick things off here. Is the inexperience this five-year-old going to cost him in the Supreme this year? I do think so. I think his inexperience will cost him because JP's got a better horse in Jericho de Repine. One that's battle-hardened. One that's won easily, but also won the hard way. And, yeah, I think that Mystical Power is the high horse because he's the son of Annie Power. That's it. One may have won a graded race, but that's it. There's much stronger form for Jericho de Repine, um, which is why I've gone for Jericho de Repine. And uh, as well as that, uh, the reason I'm wearing this hat is I just like everyone on Twitter now to settle an argument. Do I look like Gordon Elliott? Yes. Comment below if you say yes or no. We'll get a poll going and we'll take it from there. We should tweet this picture. I'll go back later and I'll screenshot from this and I'll put a tweet out. I reckon it's going to be about a majority yes. Somebody did say this, didn't they, to you before, that you actually look like Gordon Elliott. So yeah, it's it was actually, believe it or not, it was the day Jericho de Repine run at Doncaster. Jack was photographing him that day. And whilst we're getting the gear out, this guy's walking up, looking over. And they're thinking, OK, this guy's looking a bit <laughs> odd. He went, are they going to win? Sorry? I, I thought you were Gordon Elliott. I was like, I was like, this is the second time this has happened. That's brilliant. Right, Jack, we'll move on to you because you sat there ever so patiently, ever so quietly. Are you a fan of Jericho de Repine? I get the impression you are, having been at Doncaster last time to see him as well. I am a huge fan. I think his performance was workmanlike, but needless to say, it was certainly... It certainly filled me with hope because he's going to love that hill. They went no gallop early on. And he's pulled away at the end, done all his best work. Like I said, no gallop early on. And even better, the form's been franked. Second and third in the race at Doncaster, lump sum and fiercely proud. First and second in the Dove Cuts. Now, I know that those two horses aren't going to Cheltenham, or indeed, if they are going to Cheltenham, they're certainly not in any of the grade one races, which is fine. I don't think they are. I don't think they are. But I didn't see them during my little look through, so I don't think they would be. Just before I give you my pick, I'm just going to say one thing. Mystical Power, it, it's this season's Facile Vega. Overhyped. Yes, they won the Moscow Flyer, but not not for me at all. I couldn't back them, especially 100 to 30 favourite. I don't think they've done enough. I think it is just another hype horse again. But I know, Luca, you're very keen on a certain Firefox. I am. Look, he beat Ballyburn over two miles before Christmas in December at a fairy house. And I think that forms, we're going to look back on that. I think that's rock solid form. I think Ballyburn 
as I said right at the top of the preview, I think he's a, a shoe-in for the Baron Bingham later on in the week. I can't see anything beating him. And dare I say, I think he's the banker of the week. Original, I know, but he's just a classy horse, I think, and will be a superstar uh, in years to come. The slight hiccup is what happens in the Lawless of Nace at Nace last time. But what I'm taking away from that is that it was over two and a half miles, dropped back to two miles this time around. I think it's going to suit him massively. He didn't run too badly, but you're taking a bit of a chance. But I think the drop back down to two miles will suit him. And I'm pretty confident we will see the best of Firefox once again. I think he's going to be hard to beat. And I think he's the one to be on out of the two Mullins horses at the top of the market. Do you not worry about the finish, though, at Cheltenham? And especially the fact we're getting a lot of rain. It's more, well, it's currently now soft. I think it's, they're, they're currently going to get a band of rain seeing um, the updates on social media over the weekend. I think we're all at a guessing game. Until we find out what it actually is and what's happened, we're all just sort of checking the forecast and what have you. I think it, you can make the case with the weather for a lot of horses. It's going to be hard work for plenty of them. Um, just quickly before we wrap this up, Tully Hill was a wide margin in the last time of a listed hurdle. I think he's going to improve for that run again. There are people on social media backing him just because of who he's owned by. I personally can't see it. And Tom, I'll quickly go with, through this with you. Are you very much in the in the camp that Tully Hill is not the likeliest of Supreme winners this year? He needs to improve, but we've seen horses improve in the past. Look at the enigmatic horse that everyone seems to have backed, LeBake. He needs to improve. He did. It's possible. Whether it can be another grey horse that does it, though, I haven't seen Richard Thompson saying this horse is like the next son of God. That's normally a good sign. And, well, he hasn't. So, I wouldn't surprise me if he won. But, on the other hand, I wouldn't have him as a, as even a, in the first four, I'm sorry to say. Okay, and just quickly before we come to Jack, I'll just rattle through one horse at a huge price here. Currently four teams at the moment, better 365. Tell her the name. I was at Huntingdon when he won last time. It was a massive drop down in class from pulling up in the Tolworth, of course, but he'd done the done it very impressively all the way from the front and won effortlessly. The Ben Paulding team are in red hot form at the moment. One, two in the EBF final stand down today. I think there are worse, bigger price, 14 to one shots to back. I think he's a, a good each way bet here. He'll go on the ground, I think, as well. And with how hot the fort, the yard are at the moment, you really can't discount anything they run next week at all, effectively. No, absolutely not. Um, again, I absolutely cannot see Ben Pauling coming away with this Cheltenham Festival without a winner. Um, he has to, he has to have at least one winner. He's got some very, very, very good chances. I know, and it is in another race completely, but. Just off the top of my head, I know Kevin Blake is very sweet on Harper's Brook for the Grand Annual. So he is all over that horse. So again, this um, the fact that the form for Ben Pauling's team is at the right stage of the season. Again, it's, it shows no sign of stopping. So he has to come with the winner. I don't think he comes in this race at all, but I'm happy to stick with Jericho Drepin. I think seven to one bet three six five is a very good price for those who are looking to have a flutter. And a couple of other horses, Eel Atlantique. The problem I have with Firefox is the stamina that will play into the hands of Eel Atlantique. But I think he's going Baron Bingham. So as a result, I think I, it, it's a tricky opener. You're very sweet on Firefox. I think myself and Tom are for Jericho Drepin, and it's hopefully. Going to get all of our favourite Irish alcoholic beverage drinkers off to a good start. Just like to say, guys, if you are fancying having a tipple at the races or indeed at home, please drink responsibly and please allow one soft drink in between every alcoholic beverage. We don't want any wrong headlines from Cheltenham this year. We only want positive headlines, guys. So if you are having a drink, please drink responsibly. Thank you. We don't just give out racing suggestions here. We go out drinking advice and all other social advice too. So um, JTW Echo Images are not just there for imagery, but there for all your social needs as well. Right, guys. <laughs> so we're going to kick on into the article here. Uh, Gaelic Warrior tops the market. He unshipped at, at Leopardstown last time in the match race with Factor File, I think it was, off, top, off the top of my head. I can't have him for this at all. I really can't. I just think he jumps awkwardly. He's an awkward type here. 
I can't work out why he's favourite. I just personally think he's favourite just for the fact of who he's owned by and who he's trained by. But for me, and I'm sure you've both been in agreement with me, I'm looking to take this lad on at all costs. Yeah. I think he's another hype horse myself. He's another one of these horses that people go, Gaelic warrior, Gaelic warrior. And then you're like, didn't win first time. He didn't win second time. Is this horse another min? where he just has to take four Cheltenham festivals where he wins one. But I, I do think his jumping's awkward. I can't see how he's favourite. There's one horse that's gone even further. He'll let a Tom. Yeah, I was going to we'll come on to him now. We'll just bring him into it. He looks to be a horse who's progressing and peaking at the right time here. And Tom, carry on. Yeah, he's... Uh, I mean, you've, you've just taken the words right out of my mouth. He's progressing right now. He's lovely. Also, I had him for the Supreme last year, and he got blown oh, out of out of the uh, the equation by some very good types. But those types, one of them has struggled, Fasal Vega, over fences. He might be going to the Turners. Um, Marine National, unfortunately, is out with a little niggle. At least it's just a little niggle and not a more serious issue. But, yes, Um I think Elite Tomp is going in there as a slight underdog. They've all under they haven't quite mentioned him enough. Um, also, I just love them. Beautiful horse. So, and Jack, for you, I'll come on to my pick afterwards. After we've been with her from Jack, Jack, are you very much in the camp of Elite Tomp, or is there something else in this field that's jumping out at you? Who's been reading my notes? Seriously, who's been reading my notes? Because I am indeed on Elite Tomp. Uh, for the same reason, I think he's very talented. He was behind Gaelic Warrior during the whole debacle about the uh, finger wagging at Limerick. But, yeah, yeah, he was. That's uh, um, he's then won it down at the Dublin Racing Festival. I think he he obviously jumps fences very well. I'm not bothered about the track. I know, like Tom said, he was fancy for the Supreme last year, and he wasn't quite the uh, the horse that. People thought he was going into it. I'm just going to um, whittle off a few thoughts on this and um, obviously feel free to jump in, guys, after this. But you mentioned Fasal Vega, Tom, briefly. Talented, but is he proving to be another kill Cruet? All this hype and then just doesn't do anything. Found a 50, solid enough, but is it a toss-up between is it too sharp the distance and too tight the track? Um, we've already mentioned Gaelic Warrior, just no. Hunter's Yarn, I have no idea why he is the price he is. He's not done anything spectacular to warrant that price. He fell on his first run over fences. He did. Uh, JPR won. Again, I couldn't have him because he did fall. He handed on public an unfortunate win. I know you're shaking your head, Luca. I'll come back to you on that one. Yeah, Another yeah. horse I quite like, my mate Mozzie, but I'm begging Gavin, um, Gavin Gromwell, please... Please just run him in the Grand Annual. You'll see why later. Not. He's not. No. It's going to be Arco, I think. But I think it's 99% sure it's Arco. No, no. Please. He's gone no off the screen. Arco. Tom's fallen. I, I, was, I was halfway from just going, no, nope, that's it. Bang. Preview done. Sort yourselves out, lads. Um, Quilixios, I quite like him. Is he slightly on the vulnerable side? Charger, I know Go Racing Green's Debbie will kill me for saying this, but you're asking an 11-year-old to win the Arkham. Is that not a bit like chucking a needle into a haystack and expecting it to find it? And then Zanahir, I think Zanahir actually might get a place. I feel like he could scrape a place, but for me, it's Illitate Tom. Okay, um, just quickly as well, before I give my pick here, it is JPR1 for those who are wondering why I did shake my head. I can't see why on earth people have flagged up Master Chewy each way. I think that horse, with all due respect, has got no chance at all. I thought he ran in the worst grade two all season in the Wayward Lad. I think that's a grade two that has to go. And before people in the comments go, oh, Nickelback won the Silly Isles, a grade one next time out. Yes, he did, but he very much had the run of the race. Master Chewy got thrashed in the lightning at Lingfield when I was there as well. Ran very poorly. I just can't for the life of me see how Master Chewy has any sort of impact on this race. I can't really personally see it. As I said, though, I'm a big fan of JPR1. Yes, I know he tipped up right at the start of the season, 
But his jumping technique was a victim of his own downfall that day. He's very low for his fences, very aerodynamic. He jumps his fences like a hurdler jumps a hurdle, very low, doesn't really get too high, just flicks through the birch up and over quite quickly. And that's what I like about him. But unfortunately at Cheltenham, his landing gear didn't come out in time and sprawled on landing and Brendan went over the top of him effectively. He then went to Sandown um, before Christmas in the Grey Wadden Novice chase there, was well beaten behind the Patron on very soft ground. And the Patron's a very good horse around Sandown on soft ground. He went to the City Isles next time out, didn't run too well because the ground wasn't too soft enough for him that day. But then JPR1 went to the Lightning and showed just what he's capable of. He was very good that day, I felt. Jumped incredibly well. And he repelled the late challenge of Matata. But I did feel JPL1 was just having a look around rather than tying up. I think he's overpriced in this. I think he's a fantastic horse, a young horse on the up. I think he'll make a fantastic addition to the Open Company next season. And I'd be bitterly disappointed if he comes here and doesn't run his race. I think he's a cracking chance here. I'm a big fan of him. And I think he's a lovely price to go alongside what I've, what I've seen so far this year as well. Okay. All right, then. That wraps up the article for us. That is um, two votes for Ilete Tom and one vote in my favour for JPR1. And now brings us on to the Ultima. The English banker of the entire week is the Ultima. The Irish Martyrs will not bother running a horse in this. They do not win it. I think you have to go all the way back to 2006 or seven and Dundera when it was actually the William Hill Gold Cup. Ruby Walsh, Tony Martin back then to find your last Irish winner. I was seven years old then. I'm 24 in about a few weeks' time. That's how long ago the Irish won this race. They don't win it. Anyway, so it brings us into this race, and we've got a very short price favourite for the Ultima, which is quite rare in Meeting of the Waters for Willie Mullins and JP McManus, unseated last time out. Tom, we'll come with you first, shaking your head here. By the looks of it, this seven-year-old is not your idea of an Ultima winner. No, 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 and there is only one horse you need to put your money on. Ah, uh, yes, we know what's coming here. This one is a bit of a dedication as well to a, another absolute stalwart of Ireland, and that one is Emma O'Brien, who used to look after this one. Um, when you yes. think of the ultimate, you think of an amazing performance. You think of a certain horse called the Young Master. Well, there's another horse that's on that very sort of same ethereal, and they're only trained down the road. They're literally trained about what some like six or seven miles as a crow flies I can keep it short and sweet now it's Chianti Classico of Kim Bailey's I saw this one at the sales and thought that's going to make a cracking chase on one day and they haven't really put a foot wrong on the fences look Taylor made for this one get your money on guys that's it I mean bye that's brilliant this is absolutely fantastic simple case made I'm a fan of Chanty Classico as well. I like the whole novice profile coming into this race. He was exceptional at Chepstow right at the start of the season. He jumped really well. Um, I'll give my each way pick for this race after we've heard from you, Jack. I know you've sat there again very patiently and very quietly. Are you in the Chanty Classico uh, camp here or are you looking elsewhere in the Ultima? Right. I, I'm starting to get a little bit scared now because me and Tom are twins, right? We both like Jericho de Repine. We both like Ilete Tom. And it's another vote for Chianti Classico here, which is slightly worrying me, not because me and Tom have the same horse, but because a certain pundit has picked this horse. And when he picks pund when he picks horses, they tend to lose. So a little bit worried. Be named. Uh, yes, indeed. Um so I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, I've no idea who you're talking about, so they're completely safe. <laughs> right, but I'll explain a little bit more um, about, uh, well, I don't need to explain too much more about Chianti Classico. Again, he just fits the profile. Kind of reminds me of another Pim Bailey horse in Happy Go Lucky, who was second in the Ultima. Now, El Dorado Allen is currently top weight. If Freddie Gingle rides him, however, he could take five pounds off. And he was only 12 lengths behind the sadly no longer with us. That's all right, Gino at Newbury in December. So he's not without a hope. Uh, Run Wild Fred, however, needs to start running now to be able to have a chance. Um, Highland Hunter, there wouldn't be a dry eye on the course if he won, for obvious reasons. Our thoughts go to Keegan's family and friends, including at this sad time. Stumptown. 
He won at the course last time out, but he's on a career high mark. And as I did see from looking at the various betting exchanges and channels, he's on the drift. So that's never a good sign. Uh, Monbeg Genius for the John Drew O'Neill yard. I couldn't fancy him for this or indeed the National. Meeting of the Waters is jumping is an issue. The mark he's on, he won off 130 at Christmas. He's now at 147. Uh, Kitty's Light, very admirable horse. Another one of these where if they won, there wouldn't be a dry eye at Cheltenham. Big and chance again, entry for the National. Big chance. Big chance. You think he might be a little bit wound up for that race rather than this yeah. one. Yeah. Annual Invictus, the great Yorkshire Chase winner, form ties in with forward plan. He won at Kempton the other day, but I think his mark's far too high. Twig, I do think he's slightly too high in the weights, but he gives his all, and I'm going to come back to you on that one. Cloudy Glen, now, Cloudy Glen, could he run mm. a storm at even 11 years old? I think I'd fancy, him long, the, I'd fancy him over the other tre uh, late Trevor Hemmings. Colours, famous bridge, his jumping's letting down too many times. One that I think is an interesting one near the bottom is We've All Been Caught, who looks to have been laid out for the race. But even back on Wednesday, he needed 12 horses to come out of the race to get a run. I think that's unlikely. But I'm going to put another vote for another each way horse. This is a horse who hasn't won in three years. Last one off 152. They're now rated 146. Their comeback run was needed. They weren't bad at Navin last time out. And even as a 10-year-old, they're very lightly raced. And it's the Henry de Bromed's Eclat de Rear. I think they could be slightly chucked in for it for the places. So if there's a bookmaker that's offering extended odds on the Ultima, there's 24 runners for the Ultima, there might be one or two offering six places on a promotion. If there are, probably worth giving an outside chance to a Cladere, but it's mostly Chianti Classico for me. So, Luca, okay. just going to go back onto yourself. I know where you're going to go. Let's talk about Twig. Yeah, look, he's... Um... Uh, been a fantastic course, and we often hear about how much Hewitt was bought for. Twig was bought for around about the same amount of money. He was a, a peanuts buy, effectively. And from the wonderful eye of Luca Morgan, who retired champion additional, now doing very well training point to pointless and pre training up in Warwickshire, um, he will be a, a good trainer within a couple of years, I, I reckon, as well. He's doing, doing incredibly well at the moment there. Twig's been a fantastic course, he's progressed really well. I would pull a line through his run in the um. Lab in the Coral Gold Coral, Coral Gold Cup, I should say. I'm getting my name, the name's been renamed so many times. The race, I get confused with it all. They went such a, a crazy gallop early on in that race, and nothing from off the pace could really get involved. It was a show no mercy type of race, a bit of a baptism of fire for him. I felt at Newbury, flat track, quick gallop. It was just never going to work. Prior to that, he ran at Cheltenham, ran a blinder as well, actually, in behind Wacker Clan of Henry de Bromhead. So he ran an absolute screamer on softish, good soft ground. He won't want it too soft, though, because unfortunately in the River Don at Doncaster last season, he ran on what was very soft ground. And as you both know from being at Doncaster in the past, it comes up very testing and it was soft board line heavy. He um, finished down the field that day at Doncaster and collapsed after the line due to heat exhaustion. And he was very lucky to have not passed away that day. So mm. very soft ground will not be what he wants. I think they might just be lucky. They might just get away with it. It might just be soft enough for him. We won the Summer Cup at Utoxter as well in what was a fantastic, fantastic ride from Bow. Twig travelled so well all the way through. It was his first go in a real serious handicap chase against experienced handicappers, and he won in, in fantastic and simple fashion. The gallop here in the Ultima is going to be a little more kinder. They're not going to go as quick as they did in, as they did in the Coral Gold Cup. It will just allow him to find his feet. He's proven around Cheltenham. He's ran some good races in behind Shearer over hurdles and second at the start of the season. I think it'd be the best story of the week if he won. Luca and Bo's mum, Georgia, owns the horse. I was there when he won a novice hurdle at the start of last season. And only three years ago, he was winning points to points with Bo. It's a massive rise, a market rise. I think he's a good each way bet. I really do. And it's probably more sentimental than anything else. But I can't help but not love him. And he will not be getting to the front too soon because when he does get to the front, he does tend to pull himself up. So Bo will be delivering him as late as possible. So I wish all the Morgan family all the very best with Twig. Fingers crossed he comes out of this safely. 
And at 20, 25 to 1, I do think he's a nice trade bet for this. Very good. Okay, right. That brings us on to the champion hurdle. Right. We're going to address the elephant in the room here. It's been talked about. It's been discussed about. Constitution Hill is the notable absentee here. We all saw that video at Kempton. The routine piece of work was just horrific, effectively, in the end for him. Sounded terrible. Didn't work very well. And I feel so sorry for Nicky Henderson and Michael Buckley. Of course, look, they're going to, there's going to be nobody else in the house get more gutted than what they are. He's their superstar. He was so good last year. His campaign's been a complete and utter disaster from the word go. Newcastle was off, couldn't go to the fighting fifth. The rearranged fighting fifth came two weeks before the Christmas hurdle. So why on earth people were saying he could have run in both? It made no sense to me. Sandown was very soft. He was never going to run there. He went to Kempton and won very well. Has had his issues, his scope issues uh, and health issues prior to that, or after that, I should say. Didn't go to Cheltenham for trials day. Fingers crossed we see him at Aintree or Punchestown. Um... And we wish them all the very best here. This basically looks like a, a penalty kick now to State Man, doesn't it, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not even going to spend too much time on this because we've we we've we've seen all the previews, we've heard all the words, we know the whole situation. It's yeah. for me, it's quite simple. State man wins this, and I'm gonna give an each way shout at 20 to 1 to Nameen Lion. Okay, and uh Tom for you as well. I can imagine there's not too much to say, really, is there? No. Um, for the people who are saying things about Constitution Hill, I'm just going to say one thing. OK, next time you get a chest infection or a cold, I'm going to make you run. 800 metres flat out. Then see how you like it. You know, they've done the right thing by not putting him in. Yes, it may have cleared up slightly, but he's still got a problem. So they've done the right thing. It's disappointing for racing. But hasn't every other horse had problems? And quite simply, it looks like a penalty kick, but I'll give you this one. If Irish Point goes there, yeah, he could give State Man the race that we're all looking for. Would so I'd be tempted, to tempted to say Irish Point just because there. But if Irish Point goes to the Stayers, then we may as well just hand the trophy to Mullins. I don't think Irish Point... I, I think he should go to the stairs. I think he's got a cracking chance in that. I don't think he is, though. I think he's going to come here. I'd love to see Lossie Mouth in this, but she's not going to... She's not going for this. She's going for the... Um, she's going for the Mares. Uh, Five-year-olds, the record in the champion hurdle wasn't great. Um, Iberico Lord's interesting. Supplemented earlier this week. He won a better fair hurdle. Go Dante's come out and boosted that for me. Finished in behind to go um, Iberico Lord and won the Imperial Cup today. An improving six-year-old, I think he's got a cracking chance to fit in the frame. Again, like Jack, the mean line, I think, has got a good profile, too, to run well. Won very well at Wincanton last time in what was a decent enough grade, too. Not so sleepy. Who would have thought, going back at the start of the season, he would be the highest-rated British hurdler in the champion hurdle at 164, I think, and is now as well. We would not have thought that. And fair play to him. He's a 12-year-old at the top of his game. Could you imagine if he won this? I think that would be absolutely fantastic. It really would. I can't see it happening myself. I'd love to see it. I think Stateman is deserved of a, is deserving of a champion hurdle. He's a good horse in his own right. With no constitution hill around, he probably wins multiple of these. He does win it. And I think Iberico Lord will hit the frame in third behind Irish Point. So we'll quickly um, go on to the mares here. Pretty simple for me. I think people are overthinking the step up in trip for Lossy Mouth. She's so good. She was good last time at Cheltenham. She was great in the Triumph last year. She's a fantastic mare. And I just think she wins this hard hill. She's a fantastic mare. And this is a next step for her. But please, next year, run her in a champion. Just for God's sake, do it. Because she could be more than capable of holding her own here. And Jack, mm -hmm. sorry, do you want to kick us off with this? Lossy Mouth, good thing? Yeah. Uh, yes, Lossy Mouth is the good thing. Um, not going to do too much about this. You were at Wells disappointed for me this season. Marie's Rock yes. is good. She might find two other selections tough. Gala Marceau was disappointing last time out, but she ran okay at Doncaster, where Ash Road Diamond beat her. Was very taken with Ash Road Diamond at Doncaster. She jumped great. She stayed on powerfully. And the fact that Patrick Mullins came over to ride her that day 
spoke volumes. So for me, it's a Willie Mullins one, two, three with Lossimuth winning, Astro Diamond second, and Galamaso third. And that is my view on the matter. And I'm fairly certain it's also Tom's. Yeah. Um I was I was on reporter duty on York on that day at Doncaster and I was impressed. And Patrick gave me some very, very good quotes about how good this mayor actually was. And the team behind the Astro Diamond, they were very, the blue, I think the Blue Blood Syndicate or something. They yeah. were very, very much for this, this girl. They were saying off to Cheltenham and everything. So, uh, yeah, I think that Astro Diamond is the one to be scared of, um, which is pretty decent, actually. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. Wrapped up the mayor's for us. Um... Yeah, it, I think it's a, a shoe in here that it goes to Lossy Mouth. We go on to the Boodles here again. I'm not going to talk too much about this. It's an absolute minefield here. Lark in the morning's market lead here. My opinions on this are not very um, not very strong here, really. Although I did like the look of Milantino. I thought he was an interesting horse here. And at a bigger price, I did like the look of Jack Jones's Orn Braddon Fisa. I probably butchered the name. I think it's Irish. He has some interesting form lines in behind um, Liari. And I think he even bumped into Sagino, I want to say. I don't think, I can't remember if he did or not, but he did bump into uh, Burdett Road. I think at a, a big price of 25, I think, and he's, he's got an each way chance here. Um, Tom, we'll stick with you for the time being here. Is there anything in this Boodles that jumps out at you? There's two horses that jump out at me, and they are both where we've seen them up at Down Royal. Now, first of all, I'd like to say the team at Down Royal are absolutely fantastic. They've always made us feel welcome. And even more so this year when they had to reschedule the meeting, they kept us informed. They kept everything detailed. Uh, they literally were absolute shining light. So uh, please make the journey over people to Down Royal for their big meeting, uh, the, the elaborate champion chase. Um, which is the same day, actually, that we saw two of them, Woodoo and Cossack Chach. Now, I may have butchered the pronunciation of both of them, but Woodoo has done nothing but improve. Unbeaten, won two pretty decent events, one at Doncaster as well. Meanwhile, Cossack Chach looks to have been pretty much left as though this was the aim. This was the, the actual aim for this race. So we've got one horse that went on, two listed events, absolutely fantastic. While the other one went to, I think it was Leopardstown, was about possibly sixth or something, and then ended up going through and ended up actually looking as though this is effectively a plot job. Um, looks like she's this horse, Cossack, has been laid out for this race um, and just left left alone. Maybe the ground wasn't what they were looking for around Christmas, but the fact that Woodhu and Cossack Chach both went over the last uh, down royal together, both were neck and neck on the way in, and both hit the line together, that goes to show. These two are very much, at that point, they're on level terms. I can't see why Cossack is... So far, uh, down in the batting, really. Jack, just quickly, before we carry this on, Matt Chapman has just tweeted a tweet. For these, for those interested in my sources, tell me Sagino is 100%, but this may be a tweet I regret moving forward. We now we have seen the current issues with the Henderson Yard. There are slight doubts that about Sagino. This might just be a complete and utter sort of non, non-event with him. He might be okay, but... You're going to have to be a bit concerned with what's happening with, with Seven Barrows at the moment. Again, today, another non-runner due to Vets' advice. Crazy but Daisy not running in the um, Mayor's Bumper, I think it was today. And um, slightly concerning. But Jack, we'll quickly get your um, Boodle's uh, uh, selection here because time is very much of the essence on this uh, on this one. Okay, well, I'm a little bit worried about Sergino, let's be honest. Um, but I'm just going to make this very sort of very quick. Regarding this, um, I'm going to wrap this up nicely. Liari is now top weight after Nurberg, we- Nurberg Ring went to the Triumph, which is unusual because it's normally you take a Triumph to go to the Nurberg Ring. But, you know, let's be honest. Um, Carla Conti is also headed there. Um, Liari won at Musselburgh very nicely, the Scottish Triumph Hurdle. So as a result, 
does need is uh, does rather um, what's the word I'm looking for does indeed warrant the respect of top weight in this race. Agree with Tom. Wadu's do nothing wrong all season. She's very good at Doncaster. Nine to one's a nice price. Um, I like Anne Breed and Fisher. Um, again, I probably butchered the surname. Yeah. Run at Chelsea was then fourth to Liari in that same race I've just referenced at Musselburgh. And there is another reference to that, and I'll bring it on to this. But um, Lark in the morning does not win. I actually don't think that's the Joseph O'Brien first string. But I've got, I've got a feeling about this race. If this horse wins the triumph, uh, the triumph, the Boodles Juvenile Handicap Hurdle, the Fred Winter, then I will go absolutely nuts. Balboa, I think they are an absolute steal at sixty-six to one in some places. Don't get me wrong, they've only won a class four at Chepstow, but it was on heavy after they rallied all day. That's all they ever seem to do in their runs. At Cheltenham, he rallied when the horse in front of him fell. Thankfully, the horse got up, but he's rallied behind Ambreed and Fisher. He's rallied again to Liari. His jumping could be better, but if it's still soft ground and some of these horses aren't liking it, he'll be staying on up the hill for a place. And if there is six places offered and he goes to something like 33 to 1, I think this lad is is good enough to get a place minimum. He's on a low enough weight. Interesting shout. A bookmark that one. If it comes in, that's one of the greatest selections of all time. Just quickly to finish off quickly, uh, National Hunt Chase here. Looks to be a shootout between Corbett's Cross and Embassy Gardens. There's a lot to talk about Embassy Gardens here. Um, quickly, Tom, are you in favour of Corbett's Cross, Salvador Ziggy or Embassy Gardens? Uh, Kilbert King, quite simply, because he stayed on in the Reynolds town, only just lost out to the very nice Henry's friend of Ben Pauling's. I think that that sets him up absolutely spot on from here. If he picks up with his jumping a little bit, he'll be very hard to peg back. And quickly, Jack, we'll squeeze you in very, very quickly here. Embassy Gardens is my nap for Tuesday. Perfect. And I'm going to give a chance to Corbett's Cross. He went through the wing in the Albert Bartlett last year, sent Mark Walsh crashing through the wing, fell last time, but I think he's a good horse and I think he's got a good chance here. So that wraps up day one, guys. We'll be back very, very shortly for the second day.